Before I start this video, I'd like to thank LG for sending us the review unit of the LG G4. Hey guys, this is Daniel from DLT Reviews, and this is our full video review of the LG G4. So, we've been using the LG G4 for about a week now, and is it worth it? Well, in short, yes. But, let me tell you why. So let's start off with the design of this smartphone as it builds upon last year's great success of the G3 and this year's G4 brings some improvements, although may seem minor, makes the phone look way cooler. So up in the front here we still have a 5.5 inch display which I'll get into later and the bezels are not as small as last year's but they still look pretty nice and the front reminds me of a OnePlus One kind of along with the LG branding here on the bottom. So on the sides here we have a dark chrome finish which in my opinion looks really nice and much of a better improvement to last year's phone. And on the bottom here we really don't have that much. We have the micro USB charging port, also the noise cancellation microphone, and your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And over on the left and right hand sides, we don't have any buttons. That's because they're on the back here, as you can see. And ever since the G2, we have had rear facing buttons for LG phones, and it has become their flagship style. And over on the top, we just have an IR blaster and your microphone. So over on the back we have a nice metallic looking finish with a diamond pattern. This will fool you into making it looking like metal, but it is actually made out of plastic. Now you might be saying, ah, oh, it's plastic, but there is one trick up its sleeve. It is one of the last smartphones to have a removable back, which means you could replace the battery on the go and you could also extend the storage, which in this phone's case, you can extend it up to Two freaking terabytes. Yes, that's right, two terabytes. I don't even know who the heck has a two terabyte SD card, but if that ever comes out, it's gonna be super expensive. And on the back here, as I said before, we have the rear facing buttons, the power volume down and volume up. We also have your laser autofocus and your LED flash. Yes, that's a single LED flash. You might think it's a dual LED flash, but under the flash, we actually have a color spectrum sensor to make your photos look way more crispy. And here we have a 16 megapixel rear facing camera, which is awesome by the way. I'll talk about that later in the video. And on the bottom here, we just have the G4 branding along with your speaker grill. LG also provides some other back if you wanna customize your phone up a little bit with a champagne finish. Also, there is a ceramic finish, which is in white. And then we have the leather versions to make your phone feel a little more premium. And there's this stitching going through the middle of the device which in your opinion may vary but I think it looks pretty cool uh, but I don't think I'll be putting one on this device since I kind of like the plastic finish a little better. So this phone is packing a 64-bit 1.8 gigahertz hexa-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 808 SoC along with a Adreno 418 GPU and 3 gigs of RAM. Now if you're thinking the 808 is a super downgrade from the A10, uh, don't worry at all. This phone runs super fast and everything just runs smoothly. Although there's some stutters here and there, but I didn't really find anything to make it seem like a phone from two years ago. So the display on this phone is a 5.5 inch IPS quantum display. Uh, it is quad HD coming in at 2560 by 1440 with a pixel density of 538. And the screen is absolutely gorgeous on this. It has very accurate colors. And the only thing I found bad about this was really the slight bluish hue against other phones. So if you're wondering why this phone looks like it has a slight curve to it, no, I did not bend this phone to make a bend gate video. It actually has a slight curve to it because LG wanted to give you a slightly better viewing experience while you're using this phone and watching videos or playing games. And I did notice that because the first hour I used this phone, I went to my Nexus and then I held up the phone. I was like, is this a flat display? So most people these days usually use their smartphones to take pictures 
and you're probably wondering how this camera performs. Well, it's awesome. So the camera app in the LG G4 is pretty easy to navigate through and I'm pretty sure anyone would know how to use it. And also there is a nice auto mode which basically you just need to tap the screen to focus and it'll adjust everything for you. But if you're a photographer, you can actually go ahead and switch to manual mode and change the ISO, white balance, focus, aperture, and everything. So that is really nice. Also, you can take raw images and process those images with your photo editor system and not have the phone do it for you. The footage is kind of like a DSLR and it has super fast autofocus with the laser autofocus sensor on the back. It also has a single LED flash which works okay and then the color spectrum sensor which I don't really know if it improves the picture but according to LG it does so I'm just gonna go with that. So as I mentioned before the pictures are absolutely gorgeous. The colors just pop out to you and the pictures are super detailed. Once you take a picture, you can actually zoom in and make another picture out of it because it's just that detailed. And once you focus up on something, the background just gets blurred so it has a nice depth of field, unlike some other smartphones these days. Now this phone can record video in 4K, but I don't really like the video on this and there is optical image stabilization, but it depends on how you record your videos. If you're walking around like this, then it's probably not gonna be the best thing. But if you're just trying to hold your phone steady and uh, you move a little like this, it's probably gonna help out. But on the video side of this camera, I think it's not that good. The front facing camera is an eight megapixel sensor. To give you that in perspective, the iPhone camera, the main one, has an eight megapixel sensor and the front facing camera has a 1.2 megapixel camera. So if you're coming from an iPhone, this is gonna be a pretty nice upgrade for you. And if you're in the dark, you could actually turn on the flash, which will create a ring around the screen of the camera. And then basically it'll just make everything brighter because it's a white light on your screen. And if you're into this kind of thing, you could actually turn on this beauty thing, which blurs your face a little bit to make it look like you have no blemishes on your face, which is kind of creepy, but if you're into that kind of stuff, then yeah. So basically, in summary for the camera, the photos are, oh my gosh, did you use a DSLR to take those? And the video is just okay. So this phone runs Android 5.1 Lollipop, soon to get the Android M update, I guess, in the future when it comes out. And it has LG UX 4.0 on it, which if you don't know what that is, it's LG skin on top of Android. And if you look at a Nexus and this and compare it, it won't look the same because LG basically put a huge skin on it and they have toned it down a little bit from previous years. But if you like this skin, then you'll like it. If you don't like it and you like stock Android, then you're gonna probably root it and put a, another ROM onto it. But I think LG did a really nice job on the operating system. All the icons are more flattened down from last year. But one problem I noticed is that since the screen is so high quality, I guess they used the after our icon. They took it from like a Nexus 5 and they just blew it up. And that is the only icon on the screen that looks hideous. I mean, you it's, it's just blurry and doesn't match all the other icons on this phone. So besides the app drawer, when you slide left on the home screen, it actually brings you to LG Smart Bulletin, which you can disable, but I enabled it since it has the quick toggle to the remote app, which is pretty handy since I have an Apple TV right in front of my bed. And there's this widget that comes pre-installed. Again, you could remove it, but it's a pretty nice widget. It tells you the weather and the time over to the side. And over on the bottom, it tells you just this sentence of text telling you what to do that day because of the weather. So after that, basically the home screen is like any other smartphone, but the app drawer, once again, we're back to this. Uh, if you open it up, it isn't actually the card style Google uses in the latest Lollipop version. It is actually still the KitKat style, which I absolutely hate. 
first time I pressed that button, it just brought me to that. I'm like, ugh. Ugh. And if you hold on top of an icon, some of the icons, some won't do this, but it'll actually have this edit toggle on the top right, and it'll actually prompt you if you click it to a page where you could change the icon. So that's pretty nice. I've seen this feature on third-party launchers, but I never saw it on a software skin from an OEM. So this is definitely a great move from LG. So LG also has some other tricks up its sleeve like the double tap to wake feature and the double tap to lock feature. Also, there's this thing if you scroll down when it's locked, it'll actually bring you these uh, quick stuff to show you your time and date uh, which is pretty nice you won't need to waste that much battery life but it is an IPS display it's not an OLED display so it doesn't save that much battery but it still does so yeah it also has this knock code feature which means you can basically tap four corners of the screen in your own pattern and it will unlock for you so that is also a very nice plus as well. So the speakers on this phone is located on the back which is kind of a disappointment but its loudness makes up for it. It gets super loud, probably louder than the HTC One and also if you're using Bluetooth, this does have Bluetooth 4.1 uh, which is an updated version from Bluetooth 4.0 if you hadn't noticed. Basically this has been one of the best Bluetooth experiences we have used on a smartphone, period. So with medium to heavy usage, texting all the time, playing some games here and there, and watching YouTube again all the time, we got 30 to 40% of battery left at the end of the day, which for my iPhone would we not be able to do that. Wake up at 6.30 in the morning and go to sleep around 11. This phone is just killer in the battery life department. As I said in the beginning of this video, this phone is definitely worth the upgrade. If you're coming from a G2, then I'd say, yeah, just go into your carrier store or LG.com and go ahead and buy one from yourself because this is a hell of an upgrade from the G2. If you're coming from the G3 though, it is a little bit of a less upgrade, but I'd still recommend it because it has a much better display, the design looks better, and the rear-facing camera is just so much better. Also, the software is a little bit fixed up. But if you're coming from another Android phone like a Samsung or an HTC, then I'd say it's still worth it. But if you're coming from another operating system like iOS, then I'd say this phone would make your Switch worthwhile. This phone may be the last smartphones to be released in 2015, but I do believe this is one of the best, if not the best, smartphones of 2015, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone. Well, that's about it for this review. Thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this one. Also, please visit dltreviews.com for the latest and greatest tech news. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.